This is part two of the January 31st lecture. And in this particular problem, we're looking at the difference between cash basis accounting, where we recognize revenue when you see the cash or, earn, or get the cash in your hands, and cash expenses when you pay the expense. And accrual accounting, which says we're going to match the revenue when we earn it with its associated expenses when they're used or consumed to generate that revenue. Two very different concepts. So this particular problem points out that on the income statement, there were expenses for insurance, supplies, and rent. But when they looked at the checkbook or the cash disbursements or the cash payments, the insurance cash payment was 29000 supplies was 27 and rent was 8 and so the question was is why is there a difference now the other piece of information you want to take a look at is that this company is a brand new company meaning its beginning balances are zero at the beginning of the year so what we're going to do is reconstruct their T accounts based on this information So let me go to the next slide. There we go. So you'll recall that prepaid insurance, oops, prepaid insurance has a beginning balance of zero, supplies has a beginning balance of zero, and prepaid rent has a beginning balance of zero. And it said that on the income statement, insurance expense was 20000 on the income statement, supplies expense was 11000 and rent expense was 14000 So those are all the income statement accounts. We know from doing adjusting entries that we look at each asset account, like prepaid insurance, at the end of the year, and we ask the question, how much has been used or consumed? And that moves out of the prepaid insurance account and into the expense account. And that adjusting entry is debit insurance expense, credit prepaid insurance. Well, the cash that was paid for insurance during the year was 29000 Very, very different from the expense that was used or consumed. And you can see that the difference, the 9000 remains in the asset account, and it remains in the asset account because not only did we pay for insurance that benefited this year, but we also paid 9000 of insurance that will benefit future years. So it stays in the asset account, prepaid insurance. Supplies, when we used it and we made that adjusting journal entry, at the end of the period by debiting supplies expense and crediting supplies for what we used or consumed was a different amount than what we went shopping for for supplies during the year. And it said that during the year we bought $27,000 worth of supplies. So here too, we bought more supplies than we used, which means that at the end of the year, we have a $16,000 balance in supplies because that $27,000 that we bought benefits not only this year, $11,000 worth of expired or consumed supplies, but also future periods of $16,000 of supplies that have yet to be used. When we look at prepaid rent, it's different because it says that we bought or we prepaid rent of $8,000, but we used fourteen. dollars So where did that rent that was used come from? Well, 8000 of it came from the prepayment. So the ending balance in prepaid rent is zero because you used everything you prepaid. But we still have... Um, an amount that we need. And that amount will show up as a promise to pay the landlord in the future. In other words, it's going to go to rent payable. 
because you still owe the landlord $6,000 of the $14,000 of rent expense you used or consumed this period. So you've got an outstanding bill yet to be settled up. Let's look at our last problem. Here we're going to play CSI accounting again. Uh, because we sold some equipment and we bought some equipment, and the company is saying because we bought and sold this equipment, plus our fabulous net income for the year, that we deserve favorable uh, credit terms when we borrow money. So we're going to take a look to see if this is a true statement or not. And to do that, we will reconstruct the accounts based on the information that's given here. So you'll notice that equipment had a beginning balance of $84,800, and it, we bought $37,000 worth of new equipment during the year. So we debited uh, equipment and we credited cash or accounts payable or notes payable. And at the end of the year, we have a balance of 97400 But we can see that those two debits do not equal the ending balance. So the cost of what we sold must be the difference. And that cost is 24400 and that is where, when we look at the entry, we get the equipment cost of what we disposed of was 244 because that's the missing number in the equipment account. Turning our sights on accumulated depreciation, we are told that beginning accumulated depreciation is 24300 that we had an adjusting journal entry, and you'll remember that's the debt entry, where we debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation for 8700 to give us an ending balance of 26400 But that those two numbers do not equal 26400 So whenever we debit accumulated depreciation, that is the usage of the asset that we sold. So finding the missing number, it's 6,600. So for that asset that we sold, we had it had been used or consumed $6,600 worth. And see, that's where the debit to accumulated depreciation comes from. Now, the other piece of information that's given to us is that the proceeds, in other words, the cash that we received from the equipment sale was 23400 And that's why we know we have cash of 23400 because it was given. So we got cash and we gave up this equipment and its associated depreciation. But the entry doesn't balance. And what we need to get it to balance is another credit. And so if we need a credit, it's called gain. If we needed a debit, it would be called a loss. So the gain here is a plug amount to make this entry balance of $5,600. Now turning to the bank loan question, we know that income, net income, is revenue minus expense gives me income from operations. And we may have some additional things that happen. In this case, we had a gain on the sale of land to come up with net income. According to the problem, net income for the year was $5,200. So, oops. So if net income for the year was 5200 and we had a gain from the sale of 5600 did the company really have income from operations or did it have a loss? And it had a loss of $400. So the company is claiming that it has profits, but it truly had a $400 loss from its day-to-day -day revenues minus expenses. It just sold some equipment at a profit, 
And so its bottom line uh, appears to be much more robust than it really is. So are they a candidate for prime credit terms? I'll leave that decision to you. Thanks so much for listening to this lecture. Uh, and that's it.